The president is in Tallinn, Estonia. I was in Tallinn. Louise and I were in Tallinn. It was just either months or within the year, the first year after the fall of the Soviet Union. Estonia, we were in Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, and Poland. We took the train up through those areas. And uh, from Germany up through up through Warsaw and then up to uh, Riga and Vilnius and then Tallinn. And, uh, and then up to Denmark is our, oh, it's a whole long story. Anyway, um, the stores were not open. I mean, there, was, there, there, were, there were stores open. There was commerce going on, but there were no businesses. There were no signs during the communist era. You could not have commercial signs, no businesses. So you had to ask around to find out where there might be a, a kind of hole-in-the-wall restaurant. There were a couple of hotels that were working, um, a few B&Bs. But most of the commerce that was done was done by street vendors who were out in the streets just, you know, literally selling things. And in many cases, what they were selling were their worldly possessions. You had street vendors who were selling off their homes. We were sitting in Poland in a, uh, in a coffee shop and in Warsaw, and an old woman came up to us with a box with her husband's war medals trying to sell them and just... I mean, just tore my heart out. I mean, they, we also were seen as we went from country to country to country, and these were countries that had never had homeless people because communism, as much as you may not like its you-can-make-your-own-choices dimension, did guarantee everybody housing, a job, and education, and health care, period. And when that, not, not just a social safety net, when that social blanket got ripped off, and these countries got thrown into the not just a traditional European brave new world. I mean, they, they didn't even have the protections that Germans or French had. They, you know, the, the, the guys who were advising the Soviet Union as they unraveled the Soviet Union were from the Chicago School of Economics. They were, they were basically libertarians. And they were saying, you don't need strong unions like Germany actually wrote into their constitution after World War II that you had to have a strong union. They say, you don't need that. And, uh, you know, you don't need national health care and you don't need uh, all that. That's all communism. Get rid of all that stuff. Uh, privatize everything that the state owns. Give everybody coupons for their apartments and things. Let them sell them uh, on the free market if they want or let them accumulate others. And people did. They sold them to get food. And the, uh, and the people who ultimately became the oligarchs were the smart business guys who bought them all up, saw what was coming, figured out how to, you know, figured out how to game the system. And now you've got billionaires in, you know, all of these countries or very, very wealthy people and a lot of poor people. Uh, the next step was for, for them to, to join NATO. And this is something that, you know, when the Soviet Union was unraveled, the explicit commitment was made to, to, to Russia that we would not Take particularly Estonia and uh, Ukraine, which are countries that have a border with Russia, that that we would not bring NATO into these countries. And you know, in the in the late '90s, the Clinton administration broke that deal. And uh, you know, I don't I don't know enough about the history of how that deal got broken or what rationale went into it that I'm. You know, I'm going to sit here and blame Bill Clinton for it. It's, but it's, uh, but it happened. And you know, whether this was European driven or American driven, I don't know. I we're, there's actually an expert on this stuff, John uh, Mearsheimer, who wrote a great piece that's uh, over at Foreign Affairs magazine. It came out yesterday, called "Why the Ukraine Crisis Is the West's Fault: The Liberal Delusions That Provoked Putin." And I'm not sure what he means by liberal. I think he's just talking about, you know, Western European and American. But he says, you know, the, the prevailing wisdom in the West, Ukraine crisis can be blamed almost entirely on Russian aggression. Vladimir Putin annexed Crimea, try, trying to resuscitate the old Soviet empire, etc. And the, the ouster of uh, Viktor Yanuko, Yanukovych in February of 2014 was... Uh, just a pretext for Putin's decision to seize part of Ukraine. That narrative, he says, is completely wrong. You know, what this all has to do with this NATO expansion and the fact that, I mean, this is as if, as if uh, you know, uh, Vladimir Putin was, uh, President Putin was trying to 
expand Russian influence at the board, at the Canadian border, cutting a deal with Ottawa or something, or Montreal and or or Mexico. How would we respond? Well, how did we respond in 1962 and he cut a deal with Cuba? I think we know how we would respond. We would say, "Get the hell off our border." And you know, unless you're a solid ally, and we we sort of had that, you know, until the late 90s, and then this NATO creep into these former Soviet states, these former Soviet countries. Now, in order to to mollify Russia, we didn't put NATO forces in those countries. So Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland are now part of NATO, but they don't have Soviet forces, or they don't have uh, NATO forces there. And the whole thing around Ukraine is whether or not Ukraine is going to become part of NATO. And, uh, you know, President Yanukovych said, no, we're not going to be part of NATO. And so, you know, we, they, whoever, fill in the blank, got rid of him. And, you know, now you've got this new guy who is, who is gung-ho NATO. And, and then Obama, President Obama, this, this is what baffles me. And I just have to say, it baffles me. Is it, you know, who is he listening to? Henry Kissinger actually wrote a really good piece. I believe it was for the Wall Street Journal a couple of days ago about the new world order. And, and, you know, saying, wait a minute, you know, this, the, we need to, we need to define these things in terms of what our ultimate goals are rather, you know, and is our, do we really have a goal of just, you know, having NATO expand as much as possible right up to the edges of Russia? And why should we be surprised when they react this way? This is not, these are not the things that Kissinger, the points that Kissinger made. He brought up this larger issue of the new world order. But. Uh, this is what uh, Mearsheimer writes. He says, uh, this account is wrong. The United States and its European allies share most of the responsibility for the crisis. The taproot of the trouble is, is NATO enlargement, the central element of a larger strategy to move Ukraine out of Russia's orbit and integrate it into the West. And he says, since the mid-1990s, Russian leaders have adamantly opposed NATO enlargement. And in recent years, they've made it clear that they would not stand by while their strategically important neighbor, that would be Ukraine, turned into a Western bastion. So here's what President Obama had to say in Estonia with a border on Russia. Here's what he During had to the say. long Soviet occupation, the great Estonian poet, Maria Under, wrote a poem in which she cried to the world, who'll come to help right here at present, now? And I say to the people of Estonia and the people of the Baltics, today we are bound by our treaty alliance. We have a solemn duty to each other. Article 5 is crystal clear. An attack on one is an attack on all. So if in such a moment you ever ask again who will come to help, you'll know the answer. The NATO alliance, including the armed forces of the United States of America right here, present now. Let me quote Otto von Bismarck, right, the, the leader of Germany in 1888. The great European war will come out of some damn foolish thing in the Balkans. He, he, he also said all treaties with great states cease to be binding when they come into conflict with the struggle for existence. I mean, this is, this is let's start World War I kind of talk, or kind of stuff. It's not the, the, the talk specifically of the president, but the, just the fact that this is our policy uh, concerns me and concerns many, many thoughtful people around the world. We'll be back.